Hello, it's John Liu, Flow Ninja, and creator of Flow Studio app. This is the second of the Why Flow Studio series, and I want to show you a new feature that we are adding to Flow Studio. This feature that we're releasing is called Flow Studio Deploy. Flow Studio Deploy will be accessible here in this menu, and uh, you will see something like this. The idea of the Flow Studio Deploy is to help a maker deploy their flow many times to uh, different sites. And I want to quickly show you what that looked like. Over here in our flow maker portal, we've created a SharePoint flow. It's triggering off file created or modified. And just to make it simple, I just have a compose here that prints out the trigger body. So now this is pointing to my SharePoint site and documents. And I want to quickly show this here pick code. In Flow, when we create a SharePoint trigger, it creates this path where it's got a URL. So that's the URL of my SharePoint site. And then it's got this GUID. This GUID. This GUID is actually the list GUID of this documents library. So you'll see it uh, very quickly. If I show you, if I pick a different, uh, different size, say I pick funky, you'll see when the site is reloaded, the old GUID is no longer available in that in that uh, new site, then it converts to just the the kind of the value of that drop down because there's no item to match it to. And if we delete this and then reselect documents, you'll see that uh, Pico, that it's picked up a different GUI. So this one's AA3. Okay, a new site and then AA3. Okay, let's note this down. So we need it in a minute. So we need uh, this URL and we need this good. So uh, let me cancel this. So don't save. If I go back in, you'll see uh, it's still pointing to the old SharePoint site in the library. In fact, let's copy the cell too. All right, so we have these two goods. We have that one and then we have that one. Okay, and that's uh, just preparation. Now let's head back to Flow Studio. So here we're gonna create a plan. So uh, I have plan one and two already. Let's call plan three. Just save a plan. Yeah, that's three now. Add a flow, and uh, we want to create. Uh, here we go. And now let's make a copy. So we're gonna call it simple. Uh, let's go funky. That's the site we want to go to. So uh, you can type a new name. It's fine. So this this icon tells me that uh, tells us that it's going to be a new flow. And if we expand that as a simple list of find this and replace it with this. Okay. So these are basically string replacements. But what I've also done is when you add a flow, I automatically run a little wizard step where I inspect the definition of your flow and pick out a few things that I think we might want to change. So for this, uh, let's pull up this GUID. You see, okay, so we have that URL and that 225, which is this, and we want to change it to this. Okay, so copy that, pop that in here. And then, uh, what's the other one? Funky. And let's save that plan. All right, so having done that replacement, it's as simple as running this plan. Uh, it's actually created the flow quite quickly, but afterwards it wants to refresh and reread everything. And I need to show you the next step. What Deployment Wizard has done is it's gone and read the new list of flows. It's found a flow that called, that's called Simple, simple Funky. Uh, with that new new flow GUID, new flow ID. So it's mapped that. And it's also saved this. So this has been saved. And the idea is that every time we create a deployment plan, um, the new flows are saved with the actual flow that they've been deployed to. And, the, and, and if we go away, 
if we go away and come back to you know another day um we can rerun this plan so it's not just for first creating a whole set of different flows but it is also to manage them as we so let's come back to point three we'll see so these replacements are remembered we head over to the new flow that's created let's see uh, go in here. We'll see this trigger is correctly bound to the new side with the uh, correct GUI. So if we look at the peak code, you will see the URL is correct and the GUI is being replaced. Okay, so that's pretty much what the wizard does. It doesn't change anything else. Um, and it's something that we can rerun multiple times so if i were to say go back to here uh, oh one more thing um when we copy new flows they always start off uh deactivated so um you need to come come and start them all once okay check the flow and then start them once it started uh, i can show you and then you can go back to flow studio if we uh, just rerun the plan, it's not going to do anything. It's actually going to overwrite, but the, the, it's not going to change anything. Uh, you'll see that it now says it's started. Okay, so if the destination flow is already started, it will remain started. Uh, that's what the wizard does. But if the wizard is asked to create a new flow, then the new flow is always started off. I don't, I don't want a situation where New flows are created and the make and, and we makers do not go and check it. So the new flow will always start off and you will need to go and check it. But once you turn it on, redeploying, if it's on, it will remain on. If it's off, it will remain off. Right, uh, let's do a quick update and then, yeah, let's do an update. So what's a good action? Let's do, um, let's do something like this. Let's do a variable, and I'm gonna just call it email with a name. And, uh, dot app. and maybe uh, an Outlook action. Send an email uh, to this email address. Say hi from close uh, to the deploy, and this would be just the family. Let's say the family link to the item that will do. Uh, let's say that, and uh, let's rename this. Just it should be pretty clear. So initialize variable uh, email. email. Alright. That's the variable's email. Okay. So if we go back to flow studio. So remember that we've changed the uh, simple flow. Now it has two more steps and then it has a new connector. Okay, so come back here. You see there are two connectors. Uh, coming back to the flow, what we should do is run the wizard. And the wizard goes off, restart flow, and it's picked out there is a new connector. And then it also sees some variables. So variables are, they could be strings, integers, uh, or even objects. So the variable string actually needs to be a JSON string. Uh, you could, so let me type here. Let me just try a different one. Uh, I want that to be sent to support. Okay, and then we just keep the same email. So if we run that, so here we see uh, the email has been added to the new flow, so it's been updated to the new flow and the variable has been updated with the new value so in general my advice would be when you build a flow 
use variables uh, and then derive related values from the val variable within your flow. Um, and then using flow deploy, flow studio deploy, just replace the variable values on initialization. That will keep the flow the simplest. The URL and the GUI is necessary because of how the triggers work. And there is no way for us to specify variables. Your variables cannot be using a trigger. So Flow Studio does give you a way if it sees a URL and then, or if it sees a uh, GUI, it will replace them. And let's just set down. I don't need to save that. It's already modified. And if we come back here, you'll see the connections for Simple Funky has been updated to include both connections. Okay, so that is Flow Studio Deploy. Uh, please test this out. And the more ideas, you could add many more flows. You could have multiple source flows. Let's show you what that might look like. Uh, multiple source flows, linking to simple uh, dev day test. That's another one of my sites. Yeah, just that. And then at that. Do similar mapping. So for each one, you could do a mapping, uh, different URLs, and then save the whole thing as a plan. So give Flow Studio Deploy a try. Uh, it is currently in test preview, so everybody could use it. Um, this is a subscription feature. So after the test preview, where we validated it's working without bugs for everyone, we will put that under the paywall. Uh, we think this feature will save flow makers a lot of time and uh, give you a way to manage your growing set of flows, both to create them, kind of use them like a template system, but also to keep them maintained and up to date from a source uh, flow, source flow. Our direction is to uh, build out deploying to multiple environments so you'll be able to deploy from one environment to another you can think of that as a way of migrating your flows as well uh, we want to support the scenario of deploying from your personal flows into solutions as well so uh, with the up with all the work that the flow teams are working on solutions we want to totally support that as well so imagine that your one flow which is based on your environment and the destination will be a solution and you deploy 50 copies with different variations into a solution and then you take that solution over to prod and you activate and it lights up for all the all the sites in prod so those are all ideas where we're going to tackle. Um, this is an extremely interesting area and we think we can bring a lot of value. So we really hope you enjoy and try flowstudio.app. Um, especially try the deploy feature, create a few new flows and just get a feel of how that work. And uh, I think, I think it's a feature that uh, you will really enjoy. So thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoy Flow Studio. And subscribe and like my videos. And that's all. Bye.